Check this out, people. I've got all the solar panels hooked up. Now remember, I was getting nearly 300 from the other set alone. So, getting nearly 700 watts of solar, this is nice. But that's from uh, 1600 watts of solar panels. So it's still not putting out full power. But again, from my understanding and studies and reading other people's experiences, for the most part, with maybe some few exceptions, you will get reduced solar power output in winter because the sun is lower in the sky for me up here up north but that's looking really good now I bump my uh, meter it's just hanging I don't have a way to mount that thing it's a cheap eBay meter but my wind turbine is putting out power as well today so it's having a hard time keeping up with the higher voltages because the you can see it's it's gusty out there the winds are gusting and anything not over 16.4 volts right now is not going to charge the battery so i'm not putting anything into the batteries right now from that now this is uh this is properly set for um, L16 type batteries. I, I have it set for L16s. Oops, I've just hit, sorry, it's really hard to hold it and zoomed. Um, L16s are more like the forklift batteries from my understanding because there's a t they're the taller cells and uh, at 2 volt individual cells. So problem there are 15 volts so it's going to go into a whoops I don't know what the alarm is MPPT alarm I'm not sure what the struggles are because it doesn't tell me what the alarm is no idea but it just kicked down the current big time or the uh, the power but I can't run my power inverter that's the thing I cannot run my inverter right now because the Voltage is above 15 volts and the inverter kicks off. Well, I've been looking online. Can't figure out why there's an alarm. It isn't resetting. And the power dropped in half, which I don't comprehend. My, what am I? Wind turbine is pumping out some power today, though, big time. That's uh, really good. Look, it's sustained for a while here, which I hardly ever get. Now, again, that's just a cheap meter off eBay, so I don't really have anywhere to put it properly, so it's just hanging off a wire. Really nice sustained winds today. <clears throat> I've never had that yet this season to have the winds pumping that wind turbine that high. Oh, we just went up on the solar as well, a little bit. It just hit 400, which is the highest I've had this winter. <clears throat> I just can't figure out why the alarm. So, I don't know, I'll just let it sit a while and see what happens. But, it's weird that I had 700 and all of a sudden now they just hit 400. That's weird. I don't get it. The sun is shining. There's no clouds that I can see. But something must be interfering with the total power. Well, today it's all about the batteries and the uh, charge controller and the solar panels because I just installed them. Well, and the wind turbine now. I just installed all that, the uh, new solar panels. So now I'm really watching. And then I've never had such wind out here since I put up the wind turbine. So that's nice. So. Just this is my off grid TV right here. The gauges, watching the gauges. I don't know why, but all of a sudden the wind turbine is spinning up. The solar panels are pumping power, batteries in absorption mode all day. Right now it's just after 2 o'clock. When I first showed you, I think it was around 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock when I was hitting 700 watts. So, 
I don't know why it's still down to 500 when I've got maximum sunlight right on the solar panels unless the charge controller is reducing current because it's a steady 32 amps all afternoon and like I said the uh, wind turbine is pumping pretty steady all day although it's not hit, is it 1450 yeah that's not reaching the high enough voltage for the batteries so although it's spinning almost non-stop all day I definitely gotta get myself an MPPT controller because it's doing nothing for the battery bank all day just spinning 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 non-stop so that one's too low voltage for me which is not putting out the volts but absorption mode all day long is definitely a good thing I cannot figure out the alarm I've hit the reset button repeatedly I have no idea what's the problem and it doesn't show the alarm on the computer when I hook up with the computer I am trying to figure out what that is about but it happened when the uh, when I hit over 700 watts of power not quite sure what's going on here but absorption is definitely good for the batteries well there's a new addition to the tiny house on wheels I uh, didn't mention it earlier but I got this last night off Craigslist for free this is a real all leather couch there is a rip you can see a little bit of white sticking out right at the seam which is fixable which shows me this is real leather and the reason I have a blanket over it for now is to keep the baby cat from digging in that hole because she was curious about what's in there because there's soft fluffy stuff in there so I can uh, sew that up and I've rearranged the tiny house a little bit the Singer sewing machine stays where it was and I moved the table over under the window which looks fine it's a little cluttered right now because I'm still trying to organize where things are going to be and how but the interesting thing is although I have this massive sofa now in the tiny house um, it doesn't take away or diminish the the floor space in here any it's the same as it was before that so because the table was there and over here I had that little round chair that I was sitting in and then a small table under the coat rack so the floor space is the same now the kitchen table uh, chairs I'll keep extras upstairs in the study out of the way but now I have a very comfortable place to sit and relax or work or read a book because sitting on a kitchen chair day and night is uncomfortable it is no way to live so yeah that's uh, the new addition of the tiny house on wheels I wanted to share that with you as, as I said today I was busy I was running around outside and uh, taking care of things really didn't grab the camera at all today except to show you the solar power output by the way let me take you over to the computer and show you what I got today I'm still pulling in 14 watts and the Sun is officially down so actually it's full sunset and I'm still pulling in 14 watts of power right there so let's go over to the today's data log and we'll see what the advantage of moving those or setting up that second set of solar panels was I'm sure when I move the other set over to the house it'll be a huge um, benefit so down here we've got total watt hours today is 2600 watt hours total um, output watts in the entire day today so that's pretty nice yesterday was cloudy and then you can see the 1100s or so um, 1200s I was getting the previous days with moving that one panel facing south instead of facing the way it was for summer maximum summer output I finally had it adjusted for winter now the second set of solar panels literally just doubled my overall power output so I thought I'd see an extreme benefit but it only doubled my power output which is fine double is good so when I move the other panels up closer to the house so I think I'm gonna see a big difference 
So I've put 164, 165 amps into that forklift battery bank today. And that's very beneficial. I am running the Little Harbor Freight Generator right now, but it seems to be dying. It's not spinning up on me. So I've got the Harbor Freight Generator running, but it's running at 2 amps. Um, I might not have backup power tonight. The um, wind turbine... Sorry, I haven't washed the outside of the window yet. Or is it? Wind turbine has been spinning non-stop today. All day long. And that is also very good, but I have no charge controller. That's directly connected to the forklift batteries, which right now can take everything I throw at them. And that's only 350 watts, so that's not that much power. Uh oh, my Harbor Freight generator is giving up the ghost. I don't know if you can hear that. It's dead. Harbor Freight generator is dead. Done and dead forever. That's not cool. Alright, I'm going to go take care of that. Well, I sit here in relative darkness, running the laptop on its battery. The I've got a lamp over here, the Ryobi lamp, and my desk lamp. Reason being, I can't power any lights and I have no power in the battery bank because the, um, the wind turbine was spinning all day happily, and it was windy today, but for some reason, the diode that was separating the wind turbine from the battery so it wouldn't discharge the battery through the wind turbine shorted out allowing just that to happen um, I noticed the wind turbine was still showing a voltage on the voltmeter on the wind turbine's voltmeter and I'm like well that's odd because the winds have died down so I don't know how much was the wind turbine spinning today and how much was or from the wind and how much was from the battery but my battery banks are drained the wind turbine was running as a motor and drained my forklift battery bank so now I sit here with just battery powered reserve lamps so I've got that on low it's uh, I can turn it on high but let's see I keep it on low because that won't last but six hours, five, six hours on a battery. So I keep it on low. And that I've got, the desk lamp I've got running on my PowerEd 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack. I've never run that continuous on that pack, so I'm curious how long that'll run. And I'm hoping to get a video process tonight. And uh, get it online. I do have the modem running and that's about it. That's all I'm going to use tonight off that forklift battery pack. So it's going to be a dark, quiet night at the off-grid homestead. Sitting here looking at the video I'm editing and I forgot to mention why I have no backup power. The Harbor Freight Generator died. It just died right out and I don't know why. It just runs really, really, really slow. Check the air filter. It wasn't that. The exhaust is pumping out exhaust smooth, so I don't think the exhaust is plugged, but I'll have to take it apart to find out. Um, people had, had asked me if it was to check the exhaust earlier, but the exhaust port was pumping out a lot of power, a lot of air. But right now the engine is just slowed right down and barely running. So the Harbor Freight generator is dead. So I fired up the DC generator, and because I didn't know it at the time, but it was still daylight, and there was some wind and the wind turbine was blowing happily but I didn't know it at the time but the wind turbine was draining the forklift battery bank and when I tried to hook up the DC generator it kept stalling out the motor and, it, and finally I got it to work but the belt was starting to slip a little bit and all of a sudden the belt snapped right in two while I was trying to get that generator to to work it was pulling well, I tested it. It was only pulling 40 amps, but I'm not sure. But that belt snapped in two, so now I have no backup generator at all. So tomorrow I'll have to go to Tractor Supply and get a belt for that DC generator. And somebody asked me why I haven't taken back the wheels to Harbor Freight and get my money back. 
Well, because it's 45 minutes away one way, and I don't go there very often. So, obviously with the, the Harbor Freight Generator being dead, um, if it's not something simple like cleaning the ports, then I'll have to take it back. I still have the extended guarantee on it. But meanwhile, I sit here in the relative dark at the off-grid tiny house on wheels on reserve battery backup power. And the laptop's going to run out of juice in a couple hours here, and then I'll use a portable battery pack and see how much I can get out of that uh, for tonight while I upload this video.